Hi all my stamping friends, I'm Lisa Fulfrood, your creative coach, and this is the project that we're going to work on today. It is from the Playful Ghosts, and it is a box that holds a thing of Nerds Twist and Mix, and so I wanted a box to fit this piece, or this package of candy, and so I came up with this box here. And I have found that these, uh, this ghost with the pumpkin was really cute, mixing it with some of the other things. So we will get started making this project. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and my uh, stylist. I'll try to get it here so that you can see all the measurements. And we're starting out with a piece of Highland Heather that is 10 inches by 6 and an 8. So on the 6 and an 8 side, we're going to score at, let's see, um, with the smaller end, we're going to score at 3 quarter. And then we're going to score at 1 and 5 eighths. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so just past that half inch mark. So one and five eighths, and then we're going to score at five and a quarter. So two of the marks past the five, that gives you your quarter. So five and a quarter. Then we're going to turn it, and on the 10 inch side, we're going to score at, let's see, seven eighths, and then four and five eighths. Okay, and then five and a half, and then nine and a quarter. So on the six inch side, we did three quarter, one and five eighths, and five and a quarter. Then we turned it to the 10 inch side, and we did, let's see, seven eighths, four and five eighths five and a half and nine and a quarter yes nine and a quarter I was like okay so that is our uh, box already scored and everything so I'll move that out of the way and then we're going to cut our box and I do have a little template here and it lines up so this is what it's going to look like whenever we are finished so on the bottom so you want the piece that's a little bit smaller this here is like a half an inch and i think this is uh five eighths on this inch and so or wait a minute three quarter on this inch and this here is a half an inch that's what it is so three quarter down here and a half inch down here and you can kind of tell it's a little smaller so at the bottom we are going to cut straight up on that score line and to that bottom score line and then we're going to notch that out like that and just kind of like that and we're going to cut this one at a notch also like that and then on this one here and we're what I'm doing is I'm cutting on the inside of the score line for this piece here, for the center piece. So we're going to cut up right here. Cut on this side of the score line here. And then we're going to notch these out. Doesn't have to be as big as that notch, but it won't hurt that one. So pull this one out this one here i'm going to have to trim off the back like that all right so then this one here we're going to cut away completely so we're going to cut on the end the left side of that line and then on this end we are going to notch and that will cut that completely away so it kind of angles up there all right, so then we're going to turn to this side, the bottom of the six inch side, and we're going to notch 
up to that score line. And then this whole piece is going to leave. I'm going to cut that away like that. And then this piece we're going to keep here. And then we're going to cut that this away. So we're going to cut on the left side of the score line. And then we're going to cut on the right side of this score line. We're going to cut this away. That little that score line, we're going to just go on the inside of that score line. I'm pushing these back so I don't cut them. And then we're going to notch that one. So we just cut that one, so we're going to notch that out. Just like that. Whoops. All right, now we're going to um, jump down to this one and we're going to leave that one. Uh, we're going to cut on the outside of that score line so to the right. And then we're going to do this one where we go just past the score line. Like that. And then we're going to notch it as well. Like that. And then we're going to push these back out of the way. And then we're going to cut this off. You could put it in your paper trimmer if you want. I'm going to grab bigger pair of scissors. I'm going to cut on that score line. That. Oops. I did not do a very good job of cutting that straight. I thought using bigger scissors would help. That's better. So now it kind of looks like that. These other pieces can be thrown away. And I need to grab my uh, corner rounder. Let me grab that real quick. I knew I'd forgot something. I always do. I'll put these out of the way for now. So on this, because Oh, I cut one of my, oh, no, I didn't. It's behind me. Um, it looks like that. So if you lay it on there. And so we are going to round these corners. And we'll push that out of the way. And you can use any corner rounder that you have. Or you can cut it yourself. And with our corner rounder, this is um, has been retired. But you press in the middle, not on the front. And then I'm going to fold that back. Whoops. So I'm folding that tab out of the way and folding it back so I can put it in this. For some reason, that there we go. Our corners around it. Let's see. Now then, the other thing that I'm going to do is. I'm going to notch just a little notch so I'm just gonna go at an angle towards the score line and then oh, so we're just taking a small little V out and it makes it where the um, lid will close a little bit better or the little flap we're going to do the same on this side Like that and it just kind of takes a little notch out so that makes it easier for whenever we put our box together so this is the small tab we're going to fold that back and we need our bone folder to burnish all of our score lines now that we've got it all cut
This box goes together pretty quick. And the biggest part is the um, decorating. That isn't too bad. There. There. And there. Okay, so that's all burnished. So remember, this is the smaller end. So we're going to close that down and bring in our tear and tape. There's the end. And we're going to put that on this um, scored edge. Not all the way up to that score line, but just past it by about an eighth inch. Like that. And then we're going to take, I'm going to take my scissors. Peel that off. Fold this over so this has the tear and tape on it. I'm going to bring this and fold it down. And we've got the starting of our box. So our seam is in the back, and this will close forward this way. So now then we need to put some tape on this. That one up and these out. And this one's going to um, this one's going to go backwards. This one's going to go forward. So we're not putting tape on this one, but we are going to put tape on the outside of each one of these little tabs. And so I'm just going to tear the pieces off. Just put them like that. It's easier to know where they go once the box is kind of put together a little bit. Put that there. So the one that's here, that's going to fold back. So this one's going to fold up. So we're going to peel these off. Whoops. So magnet. to peel these off we're going to put them in and then we want to square our box up and we're going to press those down you can use the bone folder Press down on those little tabs in there. Yeah. All right. So then we're going to add tear and tape to this other flap. Loosen the end of my tear tape. And we're going to put it towards the outside edge on this one. Move that backing. And press our box together. And it's like that. So I want to take a two inch circle punch. I'm going to just slide it in here and just take a little finger notch out. Then we're going to do it again whenever we put our DSP on there. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. Okay. And then I have some other pieces here for the playful ghosts they're so cute i just find them adorable and so move that off to the side i have two pieces here that are for the front and the back and they are two and a half by uh or three and a half pardon me by three and three eighths so it'll go there on the back so 
gonna go ahead and glue that down. Try not to get any right up there because that's where we're gonna do some punching. So I'm gonna add this. There's my front. I'm gonna add that right about here and just kind of center it on there the best that I can. So like that. I'm gonna open this up. Certain I get that good and then here. Then I'm going to bring that circle punch back in and then try to line up where I've already cut it. Trim just a little bit extra off there. And that way you've got a place to open up your piece. Then we're going to add that back piece on. Certainly it goes on that way. These two pieces are three and a half by three and five eighths. The paper that I'm using is a, a pack of paper that is on the retired list, but you, it was still available last time I checked. And it is a large pack, and it's called Whoops, it's not the one. It is called the Dandy Designs 12 by 12 paper. And it's got a lot of uh, fun, like purples and different things in there. And so, alright, so I'm going to slide these into here so I have something to press on. Okay, so there's that. I have a piece here that is um, 5 eighths inch by 3 and a half inch and that's going to be the part for our top. So I'm going to add some glue to this and then just add that right up here. I like glue because it gives you wiggle room, but sometimes it wiggles farther than I want it to. Open that up and press that well. There's that. And then I have two pieces here that are 5 8 by 3 and 3 8 and 8. And I've got two of those because they're going to be the sides. So I'm going to set that up on its side. And then I'm going to add some glue to this. on this other side we're going to add that right there so this box is coming together nicely I will try to um, get a template to add to the video. All right, so now then we're going to do our stamping and different things like that. So bring in a piece of scratch paper. Get this out of the way. Um, those we're finished with. So with that, we're finished with that. Trying to get as much off my workstation as I can. All right, so this is the largest uh, stylish shapes 
if they're stitched and I really like the stitched uh, look and then this is just a scrap piece to do some stamping so I'm going to bring in um, the Highland Heather ink and one of our blending brushes and I'm going to start adding some Highland Heather to the center of my circle just adding it making it a little bit darker all right so I just inked that up once but I did have some ink from when I've done it before move that out of the way we're finished with it all right and then we're going to do some stamping we've got some memento black ink here bring in that double pumpkin make sure it's inked up well then we're going to come down here to the bottom and to the edge of the circle stamp down looks pretty good and I have a quarter portion of my chamois here cut it in half and then cut it down to a quarter and then this is a, a um, extra gum uh, you can get big packs of that and that just fit in there perfect and I can keep it on my desk and it's not big and bulky all right so now then I want to add our bats to this circle also. So I'm come up here above the pumpkin. Come up over here. And stamp. And then let's see, we'll go up here. And then we're going to kind of go right there. So then that way it'll group around the uh, ghost and pumpkin. So now then I'm going to bring in the ghost with the pumpkin. I'm going to put that up there for now. And then the boo. And so I'm going to ink this up. I want to make certain it's well inked. Okay. Looks like his arm isn't getting it. Now I want to come down to the bottom of the scrap paper and stamp. And then I want to take the boo, turn this around. I want to ink that up well too. Come down here, stamp boo. Clean these up. Of my ink. Make certain I don't have ink all over me. And then, now then, I have um, some Stampin' Blends here. I have this is a light pecan pie. I'm going to use that for the stem on my pumpkins right there on those so not very much and then I have granny apple green because there's a leaf right here okay that one's finished and then um let's see I'm going to use this here this is a uh, white petal pink I'm going to give him some little rosy cheeks I'll kind of do his mouth there that one's finished then we're gonna do um, dark daffodil delight I'm gonna show you how I color the pumpkin so that it kind of gives it some more depth color that in dark Like that. Put that off to the 
side. Then I'm going to come in with my dark pumpkin pie. And I'm going to outline. And then I'm going to do those natural other lines. Go across the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do the lighter pumpkin pie. And we'll swirl that out. And it doesn't take as much pumpkin pie to fill that in. And then it has more depth to it. And if it doesn't have enough for you, you can go over all those lines again. All right. And then just slightly brush that out. So that piece we have done. Then this one here, we're going to do the same. Color that in. Just like that. Then we're going to color this whole thing in. I don't know if when you were in school, if you did the outside first. That's how we were taught. That way you don't have to be as careful when you go through the center because you've got a barrier there. I'm just coloring this all in. That dark daffodil. All right. And then I'm going to take my dark pumpkin pie again. I'm going to add that right here. And I'll do those lines. I'm going to go across the top here. And then across the bottom, around the outside, and then each one of those lines. Then I'm going to do the, that little carving of the eyes. There we go. And then I want my light pumpkin pie. Pour that in. I'm not going to do that little bit here at the bottom. I want it to stay dark. And I'm going to go between the carved eyes and around the mouth. And I'll swirl everything else out around. It doesn't really take very long. It takes longer to cut it out than anything. There's our pumpkin. Whoops. And then, to make the ghost pop a little bit, because he's just white on white, I'm going to take my, um, let's see, it's my light pool party. I'm going to just outline my ghost. Then I'm going to his little eyebrows and his little eyes. See how cute he turns out because he pops a little bit now that there's um, the pool party wrapping around him. And then I'm going to fussy cut these out, but I already have those already done. There we go. That way you don't have to watch me cutting things out. And then we're going to add our... Uh, ghost and our boo to the front of our uh, circle there and I'm looking for my mini uh, blue dots to see if I have any the minis here the back there. oh wait a minute I put them up there I had a new pack already or a new page all right so on the back of the boo can't pick it up we're gonna add a couple of minis to the back like that 
And I either picked up the Nerds either at Dollar General or at uh, Walmart. That's about the only two places that I buy candy. Um, I live here in the Midwest in Indiana. So I don't know if your Dollar General and things would have the same thing or not. So I'll take the backs off of this. This. Oops, stuck to me. It goes away. And then bring that in. Kind of goes off to the little circle a little bit. So it makes it look like the bats are flying around the ghost. And we're going to take these backs off of this little one. Little dimensionals. Add the boo up here between the bats. Isn't that cute? Okay, I need to bring the bigger ones back in. Do I'm gonna do a few of them because it's on a treat box. So there we go. Get that out of the in I am recording this ahead of time and I'll do my best to get that pattern up on this box there we go so here is our the one that I made ahead of time and then here's the one that I just made. You can also take some Winka Stella and add that to it if you want to like for the eyes and the mouth. And let me see if I have a Winka Stella handy. Almost always do. And just add it in for the eyes and the mouth. And that kind of makes them a little darker, so it kind of looks like it's glowing. There we go. Just a little bit. Not a lot. So I hope that you uh, like this project and that you will give this a try. And um, I'm going to do a series on the 12 weeks of Halloween, the countdown. And so this is what I'm calling week 12 and we'll cut, we will count backwards until, um, just before Halloween. And I think I've got, I think I miscounted or, uh, was thinking a different day. And so I think I'm behind by a couple weeks. So I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to do another uh, right away. And then I'll do a third one. And then I should be on schedule and I've got seven or eight of them already designed and ready to go so I just have a few more that I have to um, get ready so I hope that you like this one I just think he's so adorable and he's so cute so I hope you'll make this one and um, thank you for watching and hopefully you'll catch all the rest of my series of the countdown the 12 weeks countdown to Halloween and so thank you for watching and happy stamping bye bye